All right, everybody, Bryce here coming at you with another real quick crypto market update. Now, this is the last market update before the election. Uh, so it's a big one. We're, we're going to see a lot of volatility creep up here in the market um, as the election results roll out, as we start to see some certainty around who's going to be the next president. So it's really exciting. I think whoever it is, it's going to be great for crypto because anything could be better than the past four years of antagonism and censorship and lawfare against the crypto industry. Uh, we don't need to get it. Too, we don't need to get into it too deep right now. But good guys like Kraken and Coinbase and Uniswap and Consensus, um, a lot of these guys um, are are kind of at the the teeth of a regulation by enforcement sort of actions by um, uh, the SEC. And, and hopefully, no matter who wins, we'll get uh, some change in there. But that's not the main point of today's market update. Today's market update is actually all about the Bitcoin ETF inflows. Um, you guys know the exchange traded funds, they were launched in January of this year. First of its kind uh, and far and away the most successful product launches of all time uh, in terms of the exchange traded products, okay? Um, currently there's about 14,000 ETFs that trade worldwide. Um, and these are by all hallmarks uh, the most successful. And I, I saw, um, a report actually, uh, and I got the numbers right here. November of 20, uh, 2004 uh, is when gold launched their ETF, right? The, the GLD sort of ETF. It's taken in $20.9 billion since 2004. Uh, okay, it's a lot of money, $20 billion uh, since 2004. The iBit ETF alone BlackRock's iBit Bitcoin ETF alone has taken in $25.8 billion since it launched 10 months ago. That is crazy. I mean, that is just to, to, to go and show you the, the rate of adoption and the amount of inflows. And then just this past week, um, we saw days where we had almost, you know, a billion dollars of inflows into these ETFs cumulative. So, uh, clearly, uh, you know, there, there's mutual funds, pension funds, hedge funds that are getting off zero and starting to set their allocation to the crypto market um, because Bitcoin's uh, breaking above its all-time high, right? Bitcoin uh, hit $73,000, uh, which is its former all-time high that we hit in March. Um, it dropped back down right around $69,000 where we're finding some uh, support. I think, you know, if we look out one week, two weeks a month from now where we're at, I think we're trading well above the all-time highs in very short order for Bitcoin. And then that's not even to mention all the incredible gains and volatility that there will be in altcoin land and meme coin world. Uh, I've been paying a lot of attention to the meme coins um, and, and been very active in them as well because I think that you know, uh, you know, in the past the meme coins were, were maybe uh, just a big distraction, but now they're really starting to form strong communities that are going incredibly viral across all the social media platforms. So there's been some incredible gains that I've been seeing. Uh, we've been putting out recommendations. It's been uh, a lot of fun to watch all the excitement unfold. Um, and again, once Bitcoin breaks above the all-time high and stays and starts that march towards $100,000 per Bitcoin, which I think will happen within the next I think it'll be here within the next four months. I think by the time quarter one ends next year, I think we'll be above 100K. Um, that's my bold call. I'm calling it right here. Uh, and so that's, you know, from here where we're at right now, maybe a 30, 40% bump in the price of Bitcoin, which is good, but it's not going to change your life. The life-changing returns are really found in sort of those altcoins and those micro caps and the meme coins that could pop off by 1,000% or much, much more uh, and do so in a week, two weeks time. Um, and being able to capitalize on those is really where a lot of the money is at. So uh, I'm excited about what's going on in the crypto world. Um, we've seen a lot of developments. Again, this this is uh, an election that's gonna come to bear on the crypto markets in a, in a very, very significant way. Um, I, I guess the, the last thing I wanted to talk about was it was a really big uh, merger and acquisition that happened last week. I don't know, it kind of flew under the radar for a lot of mainstream media. It got, it got kind of a little bit of traction, um, but it was the largest, uh, it was from a company called Stripe. Stripe is like the largest payment processor globally, okay? Um, they, they do, you know, I, I don't know, maybe trillions of dollars of, of payments and they take a small little fee uh, every time there's a payment, right? Um, so many businesses use Stripe uh, in order to process online payments and so on and so forth. L long story short, uh, they're a multi, you know, multi-billion dollar company, and they just purchased 
a stable coin company called Bridge. And this was a $1 billion acquisition, which makes it the largest acquisition in the industry of stable coins ever. Now, why is that important? Um, it's because it's showing that stable coins, which are blockchain based sort of platforms to, to send money back and forth, um, blockchains are, are now coming into the mainstream of payments. Um, you have the largest payment provider in the world integrating crypto technology to start processing payments. First, it's USDC, right, which is that stable coin. But guess what? Next, it could be some other cryptocurrency that you could start to integrate into Stripe, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana and so on and so forth down the line. Uh, many of these things are liquid and interchangeable. You can see a world where you could pay for anything in any digital currency. I think that's the way that this sort of world is coming to. Um, I'm very, very excited to see what uh, Stripe does with Bridge. Um, anyhow, th this just happened. Uh, the, one of the largest acquisitions in recent times, certainly it's been a very dry period as, as again, Bitcoin's been below its all time high for the past six months. So things have been like in the merger and acquisition world, very quiet. There hasn't been a lot of private deals, uh, but this is a good sign that things are heating back up. Um, so anyhow, that's your market update for the day. It's, I'm staying long this weekend. I think this volatility is, is definitely lending itself to be a buyer. I'm buying the dip. Uh, Bitcoin's still above the 20 day, the 50 day, the 200 day moving average. Um, there's a lot of strength there, um, but I'm more inclined to be holding and, and, and trading these altcoins because when Bitcoin breaks above the all time high and the market has sort of confidence that we're now in that bull market again, well, Bitcoin's gains are limited compared to all those smaller, newer cryptocurrencies that, that we're really excited about. So anyhow, um, stay tuned, stay tracking with us, uh, and that's your market update. Hope you enjoyed.